All right. Perfect. All right, guys. Thanks so much for joining me tonight. I am super excited to be with you tonight and put my camera down just a little bit. Okay, guys, uh, we're going to talk about selling your house tonight. So if you came here to learn more about selling your house, you came to the right spot for sure. Um, I don't have a slideshow tonight to present to you. It's been a real hectic week. The market is still crazy here in Oklahoma, and I wanted to do an updated slideshow, and I didn't get a chance to do that, so I'm just going to go over talking points with you tonight. At least there's not a uh, tornado warnings throughout the state like there was last month when we put this on. Okay, so is everybody doing all right tonight? Uh, put down the comments where you're from. Put down the comments where you're from, what part of the state you're uh, in, and, uh, of course, put any questions as we go through this on how to sell your home Put any questions in the comments, too, so I can get those answered as they pop up. This is an interactive webinar, guys. Don't feel shy. Don't feel like it's just a sit and listen to Josh talk webinar. No, I want to get your questions answered for sure. Okay, got some people out of Enid, got some people out of Tulsa, Stillwater, Seminole, Moore, Yukon. Okay, that's cool. That's cool, guys. Awesome. I'm glad you're all here. Absolutely. Okay, well, let's go over our first talking point. So when it comes time to sell your home, of course, guys, you got to call me. I, I don't know that you need help until you reach out to me. And I don't know uh, which agent that we need to work together with to get your home sell accomplished until you reach out to me. You got to call and talk to me. Some of the things that we'll discuss on that first call, guys, are things like what's the age of your roof? You know, what has you moving? What's the age of your HVAC? Have you done any updates to the home in the last three to five years? You know, on a scale of one to 10, 10 being brand new, everything new and shiny, where would you rate your house on a scale of one to 10? Is it, you know, sort of like an average lived in home, six to seven? Is it close to a 10, but not a 10? Is it a nine? You know, where where do you rate it? Do you owe anything currently on your home? These, this is what we're going to discuss at first in your timeline, your timeline. Motivation and timeline is very important when it comes to selling your home. You know, I'm, I've, I've helped sellers who they own their home free and clear, and there was no real rush to sell their home. So they priced it high and it sat on the market forever. And then I've had sellers who I feel like they literally just gave their home away because they just wanted to sell it right away. And it was one of the most beautiful most upgraded, most phenomenal houses uh, in the neighborhood. One of the one of the most magnificent houses I've ever sold, actually. And I feel like they just gave it away, but they wanted to move. They wanted to move. So your situation is a big part. Your situation is very important to the whole getting the home sold. What's your motivation and what's your timeline? So those are the initial questions that we'll discuss. And then we'll also talk about, you know, decluttering and cleaning twice. You want to declutter and clean twice so we can book the photo shoot. But that that comes after we get through talking and you tell me everything about your home. And then I go to the market and I look at comparable homes two years that have sold within the last 90 days to six months. Now, I have to tell you guys, at the time of this video, um, today is July 27th. Yeah, July 27th. The Fed raised rates again. Fed raised rates again. So every time he does it, he makes it more expensive for a buyer to buy a home. And he's stalling out the market more. So here in Oklahoma, because we're a red state, because we've got governors that want to protect the innocence of children, because we've got state legislatures who want to protect the innocence of children and not force people to get things they don't want to get, you know, we've got a lot of demand here in Oklahoma. We've got a lot of people still moving here to this day. July 27, 2023, people want to live in Oklahoma where they can be free. So you got that going for you here in Oklahoma. Um, but price still matters, especially to the banks when it comes to appraisal value, because you got bad appraisers out there. You got bad appraisers out there who aren't in the real estate business. They just go around and look at numbers and set values to houses. They don't take into account multiple offers. They don't take into account people want to move here in low inventory, to my knowledge. Now there's good, there's great, there's great appraisers out there too. Don't get me wrong, don't get me wrong, but we still got bad appraisers out there also. So we've got to set that price realistically. If you don't care about whenever you sell your house and you want to sell it, at, you know, 20, 30 grand above the market, 
Sure, sure. We could do that. Pay for the photos. <laughs> I'm not going to pay for the photos if you if you want to do that. But if you want to price your home reasonably and you're willing to come down, guys, I'll bend over backwards to help you sell your home. I'll bend over backwards to help you sell your home. Because if you price it right, then it should sell. Then it should sell. I think our average days on the market is still under 30 days right now. Still under 30 days right now. That's crazy. That's crazy. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. If you if you remember back in the day when houses would sit 90 to 120 days, 90 to 120 days on the market. That was crazy. That was crazy back then. But we got to price the house. And then I'll email you my valuation packet with the high, median, low value of the home. And then we discuss which direction you want to go. Does that make sense? Thumbs up. Thumbs up. That makes sense. Next step, declutter and clean twice. Declutter and clean twice. Mow and string trim at minimum. Square up all your hedges and trim back your trees. First impressions and curb appeal are very, very important. And then when they walk in the house, the smells, the declutterness, everything, the light, the natural light. You know, if you've got dirty fan blades, I've got dirty fan blades. If you've got dirty fan blades, clean them. Clean them off. I need to do that tonight myself. But the presentation of your home, you're selling a product to a consumer. You're selling a product to a consumer. So get everything clean, declutter, and clean twice. If you've got to rent a storage unit, you're getting ready to move anyways, rent one. Get all that stuff out of the house. Put it in storage, okay? Declutter and clean twice so we can shoot the photos and do the 360 tour and the house look amazing. The house look amazing. Okay, Any questions on number three? Declutter and clean twice. Cur curb appeal is so important. The backyard is important too. If you've got kiddos, like my wife and I, the backyard is very important. We're always looking at backyards. You've got to make the backyard and the front yard look good too. It's not just about the house. It's about the yard too. Very, very important. Okay. And if you've got an elderly neighbor or a neighbor that doesn't take care of their lawn too often, go ahead and trim that up too for the photo shoot. Go ahead and trim that up too for the photo shoot because when we put this online, we want it to have its A game. We want people to come see it. Does that make sense? All right, let's move on to number four. We bring it live on the market, okay? Bring it live on the market. If there's certain times that you don't want to show the home, tell us. Tell us. If you need a certain amount of notice because maybe you've got uh, baby nap time or maybe you work nights and you, you don't wake up till three in the afternoon, tell me. Tell me, we can block off those showings. And when people ask, can we show it early? I'll say, no, That they're blocked off for a reason. Okay, I don't mind telling people, no, it's available after that time. What time would your buyer like to see it? You know, I don't mind it. I move through it. I move through it, guys. I'll get people in your home around your timeline. It's not a problem. You don't want to show on the Sabbath. You don't want to show on Saturdays. Not a problem. I don't answer calls on the Saturday. Block it off. Block it off. We won't show the house on Saturdays. Not a problem, guys. Whatever works with your schedule, we want to work within those boundaries because it's stressful selling a home. It is stressful selling a home, you know, but it, we need to have it available for consumers at least four hours a day throughout the week and then at least on Sundays, at least on Sundays. And that's pretty reasonable. Am I right? Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Am I right? And if you need a day's notice, a full day's notice, we've done that too. We've helped people sell their houses with a full day's notice. No problem. I'm number five. Once you start showing it, you're going to get a contract. You're going to get a contract. And I'll send over an email with a summary of the contract telling you exactly what it is with the net on top. The most important, how much money you're going to make when you walk away. You know, if you price it at $400,000 and they make a $405,000 offer, but they're asking for $10,000 in concessions, essentially a three ninety five dollars offer, you're going to get a net sheet and it's going to show you exactly what your net is. That way you know what your money is when you're walking away from closing. That makes sense. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. That makes sense. And if the contract that we get doesn't have the right closing date, we just request the closing date that works for you. If you're going to be out of town that week, whew, excuse me, and you can't get the mowers, the movers, not mowers, the movers set up to move you that week, no problem. Let's ask for a different time. Let's see what they say. If it doesn't work for them, we try to figure out a workaround. If we can't figure out a workaround, we look for the next buyer. No big deal, guys. Okay. It's got to work for you guys. It can't be moving stressful already. Selling your home is stressful already. We got to make it as stress free as possible. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Okay. Accept the contract that's best for you. Number six inspections, financing, and title. So 
This right here, inspections, financing, and title, this is a lot of on the buyer. Now, as a seller, you're going to update the abstract. You're going to update the abstract. And you're going uh, to um, just kind of wait around while the buyer does their inspections, while the buyer gets all their financing finalized with the appraisal, while the title company works on the title report. <sighs> Sorry about that, guys. It's been a long day. Um, but yeah, we're going to let the buyer do their inspections, let the buyer's financing get all worked out with the appraisal and stuff like that. And the title company will start on the title work. And then when all that gets done, they give us a TRR report for the inspections. They give us a, uh, the buyer gets their own appraisal. We don't get the appraisal. It's the buyer's appraisal. And the title company gives us the title report. So if there's any clouds on title, then we'll start working on getting those clouds cleared off. Like let's say there's a discovery card judgment from back when you graduated college and we need to get that removed. You know, if the judgment's like 500 bucks, pay it, get it removed. If it's something crazy that's not even supposed to be there, then you might have to hire an attorney to get that judgment removed. Buyer will submit a TRR form, if any, if anything does show up that they want fixed before they move forward, and we negotiate that out. The contract defaults to seven days to negotiate that out, but um, sometimes you have to get an extension, especially when roofs are involved. Man, roofs slow down closings right now at this time of the video because we've had so many hill storms this year. So roofs slow down closing. And then there's the possibility of a bad appraiser, a bad appraisal. Okay. Sometimes appraisers pick houses that aren't even in the same neighborhood. Don't know. Don't know, guys. And they give you a bad appraisal. Just something you have to negotiate through. The appraiser works for the government, works for Fannie and Freddie. The appraiser doesn't even work for the bank, doesn't even work for the buyer. But it's the buyer's bank who kept that appraiser in the appraiser, what is it called? Pool, the appraisal pool. So, yeah, we just work through it. If things can be worked out, great. If not, we put it back on the market. We go get a new buyer. We go get a new buyer. And then, of course, they uh, the buyer schedules the repair walkthrough on any repairs that were negotiated to be completed. The buyer schedules a, prayer, a repair walkthrough and then says, yeah, everything looks good. So if title works good, the repair walkthrough is good, the appraisal is good. If all three of those things are good, guys, that means it's time to really start getting our gear, getting our bottoms in gear and getting everything out of the house because we're getting ready to move. The only thing that would stop closing at this stage after all of that is done, guys, is something dramatic like a loss of job or a loss of life on the buyer's side. So that takes us to step eight, guys. Real simple. In less than 20 minutes, we went over all this. And the first two minutes was me jibber-jabbering way too much. So it takes us to number eight. You definitely want to get the movers scheduled because in Oklahoma, it's a closing, funding, and possession state. So you've got to be out. You've got to be out of the house before closing, at minimum one hour before closing, because that's when the buyer is going to do their final walkthrough. You want to get the movers lined out at this time. You want to get your mail forwarded at this time. Do not cancel utilities. Do not cancel utilities until you have your check in hand that you have closed and funded. I don't care if closing date is set for Friday. It might not happen. You've got to keep the utilities on. Don't cancel your homeowner's insurance. Don't cancel utilities. Keep all of that in play until you have the check in hand. Well, why can't I just call, call them and then tell them to not turn it off? Because they might not take your call. And then you'd have a house without utilities all weekend long. Or worse yet, if the closing doesn't go through at all, you would, you would have to be moving back into a home without any utilities all weekend long when you should have just left them on. So do not cancel utilities. You could call and cancel them after closing. I promise. It is just fine. OK, buyer goes and does the final walkthrough. You have vacated the home. Everything's out of it. And you've done at least a broom clean. You've dusted off all the ceiling fans that we talked about earlier, wiped off all the countertops, vacuumed and swept everything up. A broom clean. You don't have to send merry maids through, which you could. You could, but you don't have to. A broom clean is is respectable. You don't want to leave dust bunnies in everywhere or dirt everywhere and make the house not look as peeling as it did during the showings and the inspections. You want that house clean for the final walkthrough because the buyer is still buying the house. 
if the house doesn't look in the same condition and then the house isn't given in the same condition minus normal wear and tear, the buyer does have the possibility. I'm not an attorney. Verify with your attorney. The buyer does have the possibility of rejecting the final walkthrough. And then what are you going to do? What are you going to do? That's a that's that's big. That's big. It takes legal action at that point to accomplish your goals. Do the final clean. So the final walkthrough looks great. Then you go to closing. We have casual talk at the beginning. Then the buyer goes in and signs. Then they come out. You go in and sign. And then you come out. We have more casual talks. The title lady comes out, hands you a check and a folder. The folder with your check, the proceeds check from the sale of your home. Congratulations. The buyer gets the keys. Everyone shakes hands, exchanges numbers if you want. And then that's it, guys. You've successfully sold your home. In eight simple steps, in less than 20 minutes, you just learned how to sell your home. Now, that was a ton of information presented on today's webinar. So, of course, I want you to reach out, call, text, or email me with any questions whatsoever. That is my actual cell number. I don't give that off. off I don't give that out too often. But that's my actual cell number. If you've got a house to sell or land to sell, call, text, or email me. If you get my voicemail, leave me a voicemail. Your name where your property is, you know, if it's in Enid, if it's in Oklahoma City, if it's in Tulsa, if it's in Seminole, leave where your property's at, a brief description of it, your name and a good callback number, and I'll return your call. I hope you found value in today's video. If you did, be sure to give it a big thumbs up, share it with all your friends, and then consider subscribing to the channel or following the Facebook page so that you get great, awesome information like this on a weekly basis. I'll see you guys on the next video.